11 is stoichiometry, one of my favorite topics. So what is the purpose of stoichiometry? We're going to discuss that first. And then we're going to go into the mole to mole ratios. And then the ha Haber -Bosch, and then the Haber Bosch example problems. So <laughs> great, great picture you added there. The calculation of quantities in chemical reaction is a subject of chemistry called stoichiometry. Calculations using balanced equations are called stoichiometric calculations. For chemists, stoichiometry is a form of bookkeeping. For example, accountants can track income, expenditures, and profits for a small business by tallying each in dollars and cents. Chemists can track reactants and products in a reaction by stoichiometry. It allows chemists to tally the amount of reactants and products using ratio of moles or representative particles. The other scenario is, sometimes we don't need as many moles as they are given to us in the original formula. So sometimes we want to do things on micro scales, sometimes we want to do things on macro scales. So we're going to use these formulas to actually help us to do that. So stoichiometry is also commonly found in all types of video games. Some of the major RPGs out there like Skyrim or Fallout 4 or World of Warcraft or actually any game that requires you to gather items to make something is all using stoichiometry. Stoichiometry, we're just figuring out how many items you need to craft the tools or the equipment that you need to progress in your game. And cooking. Cooking is another example of stoichiometry. Ingredients, which we can call reactants, make dishes, which we can also call products. So looking to the left, I have this awesome recipe for creamy poblano mac and cheese. Totally trying that out. It's really, really good. It's like a nice hot, spicy mac and cheese, and if you add other things to it, it's even better. But let's just assume that this recipe cooks for five people. And we notice how many cups of shredded cheddar cheese do you need if you're cooking for 10? So first off, if you're going from five people to 10 people, that means you have to double up all your recipes. In our original recipe for five, you need one cup of cheese. For 10, I'm going to assume you need two cups of cheese. Otherwise, every person would get half the amount of cheese that they normally would get in their mac and cheese, which is just simply pasta with a little bit of cheese, which is boring. Now, the rest of the ingredients, if you're doubling up just the cheese, do you leave every other ingredient the same? No, you have to double those up too. Again, stoichiometry is taking the entire chemical reaction and changing it for the needs that you have. The Haber-Bosch industrial process synthesizes ammonia by the reaction of hydrogen and nitrogen. Ammonia is commonly used as a fertilizer and can be also found in Windex. So this formula, when we balance it, if you remember from the earlier videos, comes out to be a 1 to 3 to 2 ratio of these reactants to products. Um, Remember that we have to abide by the conservation of matter and mass law and that we really do need a balanced chemical equation in order to do our stoichiometric calculations. So we're going to use this as our examples. So when we have a balanced chemical equation, we end up with 28 grams per mole of nitrogen gas, 6 grams per mole of hydrogen gas, and then we end up with 34 grams uh, per mole of the ammonia. Now remember conservation of mass which means that the reactants 28 plus 6 has to equal the products which is 34. So to answer these questions we need to find something called a mole ratio of the balanced chemical equations. A mole ratio is the permanent ratio derived from the coefficients of a balanced chemical equation in terms of moles. So again, we have one mole of nitrogen gas, three moles of hydrogen gas, two moles of ammonia gas when we balance this equation out, which means we have a mole ratio of one mole to three moles to two moles. Mole ratios are used to convert between the moles of the reactants and the moles of products between the moles of just the reactants or between just the moles of the products. So in our steps to stoichiometric equations, the first thing you have to do is write down a balanced equation and determine the mole ratios from the equation. Remember, this is a permanent ratio, so any alterations will affect the other values in the same proportions. It's like taking a cooking recipe 
and forgetting that you have to add something or forgetting the correct amount of cheese for your mac and cheese. The second step is to identify the known and the unknown in the problem assigned. Not all the substances need to be used or not all the substances are described. So sometimes they will talk about things in your problems, but they're not important. We're going to ignore them. And the last step is we're going to set up a simple proportion and solve for the unknown. So in our HABA process, we're noticing that we're again taking nitrogen plus three moles of hydrogen, and it's going to give us two moles of our product. So how many moles of ammonia, which is NH3, are created when 0.4 moles of nitrogen is used? The first thing we do is we analyze our balance formula. We have a 1 to 3 to 2 ratio. The second step is to analyze and say which are the things that we're going to be talking about. We're looking at nitrogen because it's in the question, and we're also looking at ammonia because it's in the question. So when we make proportions, we are going to be ignoring all the information about hydrogen. We're going to pretend it's not even there. If you can see it already, we already have our proportions given to us. So the last step is to simply cross multiply and solve for x. So 1 mole of nitrogen over 0.4 moles of nitrogen is equal to 2 moles of ammonia over x. When you cross multiply and solve, you should get 0.8 moles of nitrogen being produced. Does this make sense? It should make sense because you have less than 1 mole of nitrogen being made, which means you have less than what you started with. So you should end up with less than what you end with. Now, the other thing is that hydrogen gas is changing. However, the question does not ask you for any information on hydrogen, which is why we're just ignoring it. It's not that it's not changing, it's just it's being ignored. So in this next example, we're gonna try it out with how many moles of hydrogen gas are needed to produce 1.6 moles of ammonia. Again, first determine your mole ratio from your balanced equation. We have one mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen, creating two moles of ammonia. Then you add the information that is given to you. So we're talking about moles of hydrogen, but we don't know how many, so that's going to be x. And then we have 1.6 moles of ammonia. So we put that right underneath the original amount of ammonia. Notice that we're ignoring, in this case, the nitrogen gas. We now set up that proportion that you can already see. So we have three moles of hydrogen over x, equals 2 moles of ammonia over 1.6 moles of, of ammonia. So now cross multiply, and we end up with 2.4 moles of hydrogen. Does this make sense? It should, because if you're noticing, you're going from 2 moles of ammonia to 1.6, which is a decrease. That's like, instead of recipes for 5 people, you need to get a recipe that will only cook for 4 people. So if you originally had 3 moles of hydrogen, you need to have less moles now. In this problem, we're again looking for our reactants. We now have the same process as before, the Haber process, but we are going to be looking for how many moles of nitrogen we are using when we only use 2.3 moles of hydrogen. So again, first step is to find our ratios, which is a 1 to 3 to 2. Second step is to look at the problem. We're looking for x, which is the moles of nitrogen. We are given 2.3 moles of hydrogen, so this is a reaction between reactants and reactants but we don't care how much ammonia we're producing right now. So you're looking at your proportion, which is step three, which is one mole of nitrogen over X is equal to three moles of hydrogen over 2.3. Now, just looking at our givens, if you have three moles of hydrogen and only 2.3 moles from the problem, this means that our X should be less than one mole. So when you cross multiply and solve, you get an X of 0.78 moles of nitrogen gas.